Hi, welcome to this video tutorial series on how to make a blog website using Gatsby.js. Now, why use Gatsby.js or why use a static generator at all? Static, static site generators nowadays offer both advantages of single page applications uh, in which we browse a website in one page and uh, not reload, which is really seamless and fast and cool, uh, as well as the advantages of multi-page applications of like uh, applications running with PHP or Node, which offer some speed with render rendering pages using dynamic pages on the server and serving them and search engine optimization because these pages can be crawled by crawled and indexed by search engines. So static page generators offer both advantages as they can statically generate the HTML files of these uh, single page applications with still running the JavaScript that lets them be uh, a single page application. And Gatsby.js is a brilliant example of this because it uses uh, some really cool plugins that come with it and uses React JS um, as its as its single page application library. <laughs> React JS is a really cool uh, single page application JavaScript library uh, for generating components and managing uh, a state and uh, other things. It's really cool. We're going to be using it to create components that we we need in different pages without having to rewrite the same um, the same code for those components, which is really cool. We're not going to be diving really deep. So if you know the basics of React, that's brilliant. If you don't, you can still follow along and uh, learn a lot. Uh, we're not going to be doing any state management or uh, routing or anything really deep into React. So don't worry about that too much. We're going to be using uh, as part of Gatsby JS, a really cool technology that I like called GraphQL, which is a query language that you can use on top of an API to fetch certain bits that you need of data. And it can be used as well on top of content management systems on top of, uh, in our case, it will be used to fetch files from our file system and to fetch as well the posts that we're going to be posting to our blog website in the form of markdown files and uh, fetch them through GraphQL and use some Gatsby JS plugins to turn them into uh, HTML basically. So this is the application that we're going to be creating. It's a blog website called uh, called Code Blog, where different authors can post uh, blog posts. As you can see here, we have our blog posts on the left. Each blog post has a thumbnail image, which in this case, they're all the same image, but you get the vibe that there will be different in a real uh, website. We th There's some other information, who posted the post, when, and some text from that post and tags. So each post has a, a couple of tags or maybe one tag. And we can as well click on these tags to see uh, posts from this one tag. So posts that have this one tag. We have a sidebar, a newsletter section, which is a really cool thing. Uh, if you have a blog website, you have to have a newsletter to keep your readers engaged with emails, uh, telling them that you've posted new posts. Uh, advertisement space if you intend to do that it's a really cool way to generate revenue from blog uh, websites we have a section for recent posts and as you can see this web this uh, sidebar exists on all pages so if we go to about which is empty right now you can fill it with anything you want about your specific website or etc and uh, we can go to a team which has our authors you can have more than two and uh, we have details about them, their images and uh, their names, their bio. And you can click on view posts to see posts by only this author. And now when we go to this author page, we see the information about the author on the right side here, along with their social media account links. Uh, if we click on one post, it takes us to that post page. This is the single post page. And as you can see, we don't have a lot of text in a real blog post. You're gonna have you're gonna have more text, so this section is gonna be bigger. Um, we're gonna implement a discuss plugin for posting uh, comments on posts, which is really cool. 
and we're going to implement as well social uh, media share buttons to share these uh, blog posts externally in social media which is which is going to which is going to provide some more accessibility and uh, for your blog it's really cool to have so it's basically a fully featured i forgot sorry i forgot about the tag page you can just view all the tags that exist till this uh, point in time and you, you can just Pick, for example, I want to see posts with the tag code. I click that and I see there's two posts and there we go. One more thing that I forgot to mention is that we have pagination. So right now it's set to paginate on two posts. So uh, on two, on each two posts, it's going to make a new page. But later on in a, in a real world scenario, you're going to have maybe 10 or five if you want. So I just put it at two to demonstrate that it works. So we have uh, these pagination pages so as you can see here it's page two and if we go back to home we see the latest two pages two posts rather so it's basically a fully featured blog website uh most the functions that in a, in a blog page in a blog post rather in a blog website that you need are are in this project so uh, so yeah now let's go over the technologies that we're going to need or the libraries or tools that we're going to need to um, write the code for this project. So we need Node.js installed. If you don't have it installed yet, uh, go ahead and install. Either version is fine, latest or latest stable version, both are fine. We basically just need it to, uh, to use NPM, which is the package management system that comes shipped with Node. Uh, we're going to use that to install our dependencies. Um, for editing code, I'm using Visual Studio Code, which I highly recommend. It's my favorite editor. Uh, you can also use Atom or Sublime or um, even Brackets. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, one of the tools that I recommend, if you don't have uh, if you don't have it installed, Git Bash. Uh, it's a really cool command line interface tool. Uh, it gives you access access as well to Git um, functionality. So yeah, if you have everything installed, um, we can now install Gatsby itself. So let's run the command line anywhere really, it doesn't make a difference right now. And to check that we have npm installed, let's run npm-v, which stands for version, and we see that we have npm installed. So let's install Gatsby. So let's go npm install dash g for global Gatsby. Sorry, I misspelled that Gatsby-CLI. Uh, this is going to install uh, the Gatsby CLI globally, which we're going to use to uh, create new Gatsby uh, applications and, and serve them and build them, etc. So I'll be back once this is, in the, with, this is done installing. Okay, so it's done installing. It's done installing right now. And if you want to double check, <coughs> we can run npm list dash g for global and let's add dash dash depth equals zero so that we don't see the full tree of uh, the dependencies we just see the the topmost layer which is the name of the dependency yeah as you can see we have now gatsby cli installed ignore the other packages i have you don't need any of these you just need npm and gatsby cli so let's create our application but let's do that in the next video because this video is getting too long. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.